Hey guys, this is James from Butler Farms and just gonna bring you along uh, today just for a little project that I got going on. This is uh, two raised beds that uh, I have here in the yard. Um, they are not ideal, but they are, they were free. So um, I took advantage of them and believe it or not, I grow quite a bit in these. Uh, this is my carrot beds. Um, this is during the uh, late spring and early summer. You can see the remnants of um, uh, some cherry tomatoes there that there's no telling how many times we come out here and pick those and they just keep on producing. So they're not exactly what I want as far as raised beds and in the future um, as I continue to expand I'll continue to um, uh, get something close to what I'm looking for but as I said they were they were free somebody was getting rid of them and they've been here now for about two years and uh, the amount of, of produce that we've been able to get out of them are it is kind of amazing really uh, but it is late summer it just turned to fall is Labor Day and we are in the process of uh, summer garden cleanup it has been so incredibly hot here in central Alabama that um, I haven't been able to get out there and get it cleaned up. Usually by this time of the year, I've already got it, uh, the big garden cleaned up. Um, all my tomato steaks pulled out and um, all the old plants pulled out and I'll show you more about that later. But um, we've had a heat wave here that has just kept me um, out of there. Uh, the times that I have away from my job, it's just been so hot that I just haven't done it. But I am gonna get out here today and uh, clean this up and uh, it's got, um, I've already got plans for it that I'm going to go ahead and put in today. And so uh, uh, just hang out with me and um, after I get this cleaned up and ready to plant, I'll tell you what's going in here. All right, guys, well, I'm back here with you. And as you can see, I've got these raised beds cleaned out. Um, again, I, it's hard to believe how much uh, we get out of these um, every year. I usually, during the summer, um, put three or four cherry tomatoes out here it's just quick and easy to come out of the house and grab some for salads or just to eat um, I put my big tomatoes down in the garden um, the ones I can and the ones we use for slicing and tomato sandwiches and that kind of thing but I usually put um, my cherry tomatoes up here at least some of them I do have some of them in the garden as well but I've got it cleaned out and um, I don't really go into a lot with that now these beds as you can see they're pretty deep um, and again they were they were given to me so um, that's that's a blessing in itself but um, when I originally started out I filled the bottoms up with uh, pretty good sized branches from as you can see we've got big trees here in the yard that during storms and things branches will come down and so that's what's in the bottom and then I filled them with some good soil um, I have continually added some homemade compost to them over time and um, I just did that as well. I've get, given them a good soaking. Uh, it's been so dry and so hot here uh, in central Alabama that um, they are that they were in desperate need of some uh, water. Now this uh, plant here is some leftover seeds that I have had of some crimson sweet um, uh, watermelons. And I planted them really, really late, so I don't know that they're going to do much. It's just an experiment. I like to try different things. Most of the time, I would plant my watermelons in the ground, obviously. Um, but these, I just had a few extra. I had a blank spot out here. So, you know, I said, why not? Let's see what we can do with them. And when I came out here to look, as you can see, there is uh, a watermelon growing there. So, you know, even, even if I just get one, um, that, that would be awesome as well yeah i probably planted them too late but like i said i'm always playing around i had a few extra just laying around that i needed to do something with and so we'll give it a shot and see now these buckets out here i do a lot of growing in buckets as well um i'll show you more about that later Th i had um cherokee tan uh, and seminole pumpkins in them and they're not the kind of pumpkins you're thinking about that are big jack-o'-lantern pumpkins those aren't really good to eat anyway um, these are eating pumpkins and they are about the mine get about the size of a cantaloupe maybe smaller um, but they keep for a very long time and um, they are 
good for pies and um, I mean they you can cut them up and and steam them or cook them like regular squash and eat them that way but I've cleaned those out those two I've still got to work on a little bit but um, I've cleaned these two out and not today but uh, here in the next couple of weeks I'll be planting kale in those and I always have a real good stand of kale um, we don't eat a ton of it but we do eat it and um, these four buckets that um, that I just clean out and plant my kale in it's we eat off that kale all winter it's very cold hardy and uh, unless it gets really really cold for several days in a row in which I'll come cover them up but we just come out here and cut it when we need it now what's going in here today is lettuce um, it is um, September the 4th and in Alabama that's really really early for lettuce um, and I, I understand that but we I've done this for several years now and um, this is a lettuce mix that's more of a cut and come again kind of lettuce I don't grow it out in heads um, I, it, it this whole um, that end down there and this part right here will all be uh, full of different kinds of lettuce and I cut the um, outside leaves off as we need them to make salads and and those kind of things and as long as you keep that center portion intact it'll keep coming back it'll keep producing now eventually um, I will have to replant these they will um, uh, be in still as hot as it is we, we're gonna stay uh, hot in Alabama usually all the way through October maybe with a couple of cool snaps but it, it's gonna be where most people um, in the country would consider hot all the way through October and even in November we've been known to wear uh, shorts and short sleeve shirts at Christmas down here. So um, That's just part of what we have to deal with here the humidity and the heat but um, You know, I've, I've always told don't plant uh, Lettuce this early, but I always plant it That's one of the first things I plant in the spring and we have fresh greens and we are able to um, uh, Not have to buy packaged uh, salad at the store and again as uh, I say in a lot of my videos, I know exactly what's on it, and more importantly, I know exactly what's not on it. And I don't spray any of my um, any of my produce with uh, herbicides or insecticides, and um, you know they're not they they do well. Um, but we'll get a we'll get a stand here, and when those kind of uh, play out, uh, I'll plant some more. And that second planting will actually take me pretty much through the winter. Um, usually late December early January they will really start to struggle um, when we finally do get cold down here but um, the cooler it gets the sweeter it gets and um, so um, you know if it's just it's it's cheap seeds and they do well here and you know we get a good return on them we it's more salad than than we can eat and it just keeps on coming now the salad blend that I get is from um, Baker Creek and um, it's called Rock, Rocky Top Lettuce Salad. Now, for those of us that are Alabama fans, it's kind of hard to buy anything that uh, says Rocky Top on it, but I will have to admit it does a really good job. And um, none of the seed places are gonna tell you exactly what the mix is um, in their, in their uh, uh, blends. But um, over time, um, I've kind of been able to pick some of them out just from uh, using them for several years and so you're gonna get green leaf lettuce I'm sorry about all the traffic it is Labor Day weekend and um, we live right down the road from a very uh, popular public lake but um, we get a lot of green leaf lettuce uh, green oak leaf Lola Rosa red leaf uh, radicchio um, sometimes you will get uh, a few uh, uh, spinach, uh, spinach plants in there uh, arugula and um, very rarely do I get the arugula, but you can definitely taste that when it uh, comes up. You get butter lettuce, uh, some baby chard, some baby kale, pak choy, tot soy, uh, different things like that. So it's, it's a mix, and it's uh, basically what you would get in the grocery store with a spring mix. Um, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's much better, though. It is so much better. Um, than what you get in in the grocery store so I'm gonna put these in uh, I'll bring you along as we uh, as the season goes on and we start getting this first rush of these uh, of this lettuce and then as we take it out and put a new planting in 
to last us through the winter. Now, one thing that I do want to say is the packages all tell you um, to um, plant this um, about a quarter of an inch deep. Now, that's really, really hard to do. Um, a quarter of an inch deep is, 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 I mean, you can spend all day out here doing this. And in the past, when I first started growing lettuce, I did spend a great portion of time out here doing that. Um, the problem with that is, is more than likely you are going to be more than a quarter of an inch deep and you are going to hurt your uh, germination rate. And so what I do is I have put homemade compost in here, which we'll talk about in a later video. And I have uh, wet it real good. I have stirred it um, uh, into the old soil that was here and wet it again, trying to get the moisture down in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprinkle it on top. And then I'm going uh, to use a little roller. I didn't, I don't have it down here with me right now. I'll show it to you. Um, it basically looks like a, a paint roller, but it's solid and it's uh, much smaller than that. And all I do is I just roll it on top of the soil. And what I'm trying to do is make uh, contact, make good uh, seed to soil contact with the soil. Now, it does push it down in the soil a little bit and it, it tends to be just the right amount. So instead of uh, taking all your time digging little uh, you know quarter inch or, or, or planting your seeds and then trying to sprinkle some dirt on top I've never had a lot of success with that uh, again it's just I tend to even though I'm trying to be really really careful uh, with it I tend to plant it too deep and when I've started um, planting it on top and then just rolling it to uh, get good contact with it and then uh, soaking it in with uh, a good bit of water especially as hot and dry as it's been I've always had really good success with it there's now that doesn't guarantee success ever uh, in the garden but that's just the way I've been doing it for several years now and it has turned out well so looking forward to some fresh salad greens um, this fall and this winter that I don't have to buy from the store uh, they're much healthier they're much tastier um, they're definitely better for you and um, you can just tell the difference in quality they haven't been had they haven't had to be shipped all the way across the nation to do it so once they start coming up once we start um, uh, harvesting some of it I'll bring you back and I'll also uh, share with you as as the kale comes along because uh, again the, the kale does really well here and as mild as it is in our winters here they they get sweeter when it gets colder but they they last all winter long and we just keep eating off of them and they keep producing so thank you for being with me uh, i pray you're having a good labor day weekend and that you are out doing something you enjoy and um, maybe it's working in the garden maybe it's getting ready for those fall plantings and and there's more of that to, to come here uh, hope hopefully we'll get something in the ground uh, in the big garden uh, for fall. I haven't done turnip greens and collards and those kind of things in several years, but uh, I am trying very hard to get that done this year, um, but we'll see. So it's always uh, a work in progress. It's always a journey, and I thank you for being here with me on this journey. So until next time, this is James from Butler Farms, and I pray that you uh, have a great day and will come back and see us. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, that helps us out tremendously, and if, if you watch this video, um, hit the thumbs up button because that helps us out as well. Until next time, this is James at Butler Farms.